Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. You can view the live stream on Facebook at Mother Miriam Live. Now, here's Mother Miriam. Good morning, beloved family. Good morning. How are you? I pray that you're well. I always do that. We have a very unusual, a first, a most special program today. We have the honor of having with us a guest, and not just any guest, but Dr. Mark Miravalli. He is um, I don't, I'm going to give him a new title. He's Our Lady's Son. I know Jesus is Our Lady's Son, <laughs> but if there's a human being on the earth who is the son of Our Lady, who loves her uh, as I would love to love her one day, it's Dr. Mark Miravalli. Now, I don't know if Dr. Miravalli is on our screen yet, but I don't want to embarrass him, so close your eyes, uh, Mark, because I'm going to tell people who you are. So, uh, Dr. Mark Miravalli earned his Sacred Theology doctorate at the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome. He holds the St. John Paul II Chair of Mariology at Franciscan University of Steubenville, where he's been teaching since 1986. Dr. Miravalli is the founder and senior editor of Ecce Mater Tua, in an international journey of Mariology research. He's also president of the International Marian Association, comprised of more than 130 theologians, bishops, clergy, and laity worldwide who seek to promote Marian devotion and doctrine. Okay, take a deep breath. I'm not through. Hold on. Dr. Mary Valley is well known throughout the world for his lectures on Mariology. Dr. Mary Valley has addressed several Episcopal conferences, including those of South India, Nigeria, Venezuela, and Costa Rica. He's also assisted bishops with preliminary, preliminary investigations, into reported apparitions. Doctor, I know, I'm almost done. Just hang on. He's too, I, can't, I have to read you all this. He's too incredible, and he's on our program. Dr. Maravalli has spoken at numerous international conferences and has appeared on EWTN, National Public Radio, BBC, and Fox News. Last paragraph. Dr. Maravalli is the author and editor of over 20 books in Mariology and Spiritual Theology, including the most recent works titled Meet Your Mother, An Introduction to Mary, Meet Your Spiritual Father, An Introduction to St. Joseph, Time to Meet the Angels, and Jesus in You, the Indwelling Trinity in the Souls of the Just. I would want to meet a man who could write all those books. It's just absolutely um, uh, just fantastic. So uh, Dr. Miravelli is here with us and the occasion for his being here with us is um, I'm just going to say urgent because it has to do with Our Lady and everything with Our Lady especially in these days is absolutely urgent. It's urgent because Jesus is giving us signs all over the world that we are at the I don't know if Dr. Miravelli will agree, sort of the end of the end times, at least the beginning of the end of the end times. Jesus came to us first through the Blessed Mother, and he's coming to us again through her. And her messages and her apparitions are consistent um, and all over the world. And Dr. Mark uh, is the greatest... uh, expert on, I don't like the word expert, but he's her son. So who, what son doesn't know his mother? So today, our, the focus is Our Lady of All Nations, Our Lady of All Nations. And um, Our Lady of All Nations is Our Lady of Guadalupe, it's Our Lady of uh, Kita, it's, our, it's all Our Ladies. I keep saying she's one lady, she's the Messiah has one mother, and she keeps showing up all over the world in different outfits. So today it's Our Lady of All Nations <laughs> and the very, very important doctrine that needs yet and soon to be formally declared that she is co-redemptrix. So, Dr. Mark Miravalli, are you there? Come in. 
Mother, I am there. And I, I have to start by saying uh, a comment made by a former president years back. He said, you know, that was an introduction that my father would appreciate, but my mother would have actually believed. <laughs> so, uh, okay. While I appreciate your kindness, it, it, it's all the most. So it's an honor to be with you. And I, I couldn't agree more that it's never been more peacefully urgent to respond to the mother's message than right now. I think these things are coming to a head, coming to uh, a challenging fruition. And that means we've got to do what the mother did when she was given a message from an angel. We have to say yes, and we have to live that yes. So I'm grateful to you uh, for your great Marian love. I, I, I must tell our, our, our uh, viewers and listeners, that I had the privilege of he hearing your whole conversion story to Our Lady at a, at a conference of the International Marian Association. And so I, I know of your great love of the mother. Uh, and so it's an honor to be on this program, and it's an honor to discuss Our Lady with you and the, what I would call, peaceful urgency. Because as Our Lady you know, went into the hill country, she went with peace, but she went with haste. And I think she's coming to us now with those same two modifiers. She's always the queen of peace. She's always bringing the peace of her son. But there's a haste, and the haste is in direct proportion to the need we have as a pretty messed up humanity for her message and for her son. So, so thank you for this privilege of being on the program. And may I say that her first message to everybody in the world, I've said this many times, is, do I have a son for you? So there, she's, she's, got a, she's a Jewish mother. What Jewish mother wouldn't want you should know her son. She has a one-track mind. That's, Go ahead. Uh, yeah, and as a Jewish mother, if, if, if you let her into your heart, as St. John Paul II says, is, is really the understanding of John 19. John took Mary into his home. Well, in the Greek, it's not the word home. It's, it's literally own, that John Ooh. took Mary into his own, which John Paul says is the interior life. What Jewish mother isn't going to start cleaning, put things in order? Oh, I um, love do that. A, a proper prioritizing. That's, that's what great. a Jewish mother would do. And so that's what happens when we do consecrate ourselves to her and invite her entirely into our own, our, our, our spiritual life. So may I say uh, that based on that, that we want to know how to prepare for uh, everything today that's coming on us and we need to clean, clean up our act. And so how do you clean up your act? You invite a Jewish mother in. She'll direct you. Exactly. Don't worry. She won't let you slough <laughs> off. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And the intensity will always be maternal and intentional. That is, it, it, it's not a, um, a unfocused, out-of-control uh, cleaning process. It's a very cardiac, it, it, it's almost surgical on how Our Lady works on our hearts because she knows our hearts better than we know our hearts. And so all we have to do is give her the yes, and then she can really go after the elements in our heart that need serious cleansing, both as a, as, as a 7 billion plus human family, but also mothers individuals. You know, Edith Stein got that right. Women have the gift of the particular. Men have a more of a gift of the universal, but women have the gift of the particular, and that means, just as she identified the need that Cana, very specifically, she knows the, the particular need of my heart. She knows my vices, my weaknesses. And, and so it's a cleanup call for humanity, but because of her maternal solicitude and her feminine solicitude, she'll help us to be saints individually as well. But that's why it's so important that we're saying yes individually and also yes to the overall Marian message to the modern world, which includes her message of uh, the Lady of All Nations in, in Amsterdam. Mark, listening to you, to me, is listening to a beautiful orchestra. It's just yeah, music. So beautiful. Praise Beloved, God. you need to know Our Lady in order to speak like that and in order to love like that. How are you going to love Our Lady? Ask Jesus. He'll t help you to love her son, uh, his son, his son. Oh, the other way around. Jesus will help you to love his mother, and Mary will help you to love her son. Have no fear. That Amen. just the desire Amen. of your heart, and it's done. Right? Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's absolutely so true, Mother. And please. Oh, no, please. I was just going to ask you about, um, to tell us about Our Lady of All Nations. 
um, it's what she is. You, it, everything we think about naming Our Lady, it's she already is that. It's just a question of identifying and calling her it, calling her by what she yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can't help but think. You know, right now, if Saint Maximin Kolbe and Saint Louis Rita Monfort and Saint Bernard of Clairvaux are, you know, at a table at, 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 a, at a divine banquet. Oh, my. You know what they're not saying to each other? They're not saying, you know what, I went too far about Our Lady. If they're saying <laughs> anything, they're saying, we could have said more. Always. We could have, because all that we said, and these are the great maximal teachers on Our Lady, once they see her in her full glory in heaven, there's only the, the hope, although hope is fulfilled in heaven, right? But... Uh, we could have said more. So let's do our part by saying all we can that remains part of the, the true doctrine of the church. And that, that includes her roles as, as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, as we'll discuss. So with the Lady of All Nations, you have, and, and, and for our, our viewers and listeners, we can, you know, after the break, talk about, um, you know, kind of the, the idiot's guide, so to speak, the, the, the basics of what the message <laughs> says. And then we can talk about how it applies idiots. for us today. God did not make No, you're right. I don't, yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Scratch that. I was just using it's a contemporary The expression. guy, never mind idiots. I, I, because I don't like right, being I, called right. by my own description. I don't like that. So. <laughs> I don't, yeah. it was, I, I, went to, I went to secular mother. You're right. Well, idiot's guide, dummy's guide. And this is just a riot. I, I, think they're, I think they're very funny because they give people the courage to say, well, there are other people who don't know like me, right? Um, so it's it's terrific. I love you for that. So, okay, dear ones, this is the music for our break. We will be right back. Don't miss a second with Dr. Maravalli. It's too wonderful. We'll be right back. We stand at a crossroads in history. We can stand up for life, family, and a Christian culture, or we can stand idly by while the fabric of society becomes fundamentally anti-life, anti-family, and anti-Christian slowly leading to its own demise. LifeSite News is the leading defender of life, family, and Christian culture. Through our news reporting, we seek to educate readers with information and zeal. They need to fight the most crucial battles of our day, and we need your help to continue that mission. You can support LifeSite News by following our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Another way to support LifeSite is to prayerfully consider becoming a Sustain Life monthly donor to help us continue to save lives in the culture. To donate, visit give.lifesitenews.com forward slash sustain life. Our staff of over 40 and millions of future generations, thank you for helping to save the culture. Hello, beloved. This is Mother Miriam, host of Mother Miriam Live. Like the Catholic Current and the many other programs that originate from the Station of the Cross, Divine Mercy in My Soul is all about the messages that Jesus revealed to St. Faustina. It is aired every Sunday morning at 11 Eastern and Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Or you can listen anytime to Divine Mercy in My Soul on the iCatholic Radio mobile app. This is Jesuit Father Robert McTague, host and producer of The Catholic Current. Join me on Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern when I welcome author and journalist Sue Ellen Browder to discuss her new book called Sex and the Catholic Feminist. She was a leader of progressive feminism and is now a faithful Catholic. Find out how by joining us on Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on The Catholic Current, heard on the station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network and the iCatholic Radio. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back. Welcome back, beloved family, to Mother Miriam Live. This is a most unusual and special, special uh, program today. We have Dr. Mark Miravalli with us, um, uh, focusing on Our Lady, because he is Our Lady's son. He is so 
beautiful and wonderful. We want to talk about Our Lady of All Nations, co-redemptrix, and if we uh, talked about all about Our Lady, we'd be here through all eternity. Dr. Mark is um, a... um, He is, uh, let's see, he holds a uh, sacred theology doctorate at the uh, Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome and uh, and the St. John Paul II Chair of Mariology at Franciscan University of Steubenville presently, where he's been teaching since 1986. I won't read the rest because the program will be over. So, dearest, dearest Mark, we just got to begin to speak of... Our Lady of All Nations, when the music for the first break began. Who is Our Lady of All Nations? What is that about? Yeah, let's, let's just go, great, Mother, it's a great question. Let me try to summarize what, what really were messages from 1945 until 1959, and then finally received the approval of the local bishop uh, on May 31st of 2002. So essentially... She comes to a Dutch woman, a uh, visionary's name is Edith Perdeman, and she begins with a series of prophecies. Now, you know, Mother, as we recall, one way that heaven can authenticate itself, so to speak, that, that it can give indications of being truly of the supernatural origin, is to give prophecies that come true. We have this, of course, in, in Fatima in a very powerful way. So... For the first five or six years, Our Lady gives a number of, of, of very important prophecies. For example, in 1945, she said that the country of Israel would come together once again after not being a country for many years. And, of course, that would take place uh, in 1948. She also gave to the visionary a vision of China. There was a red flag flying over China and a prophecy of much bloodshed. That would happen in 1949. And it continues. In 1949, she sees a vision of Korea with a line drawn through it and said that this division would cause future danger for the church. And, of course, that's from which North Korea comes forward. A whole series of prophecies. She prophesied the Second Vatican Council, a man walking on the moon. And at one point, when she was uh, herself wondering, how do I know this is of God? I could be deceived. This could be me or it could be the adversary. Our Lady, in January of 1958, gave her the exact date of the death of Pius XII. She wrote it down, put it in a letter, gave it to her spiritual director, and in October of that year, on exactly that day, Pius XII uh, died. And so the first years were prophetic and included great economic stress, uh, a great spiritual decline, uh, and a series of such prophecies. Well, That all prepared for her great request, Mother, and her great request started in uh, 1951, and that was the request for a solemn proclamation of Our Lady's role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. And, you know, there was a recent, actually, there was recent fake news uh, about uh, Amsterdam saying that uh, the the church had condemned it. it. It was simply an invention by an Italian blogger that was sadly picked up by a French a news agency and sadly spread all over the world. But that's okay. That allows us to speak about it right now, right? So we can take advantage and positive of that. But it's absolutely not true. Um, And in fact, in the second part of the apparitions, Our Lady asked for a solemn definition. Uh, And it's explained in there, in her messages, that this is something the Trinity wants for her. This is not Our Lady on an ego trip because she has no ego. This is Our Lady doing the will of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because until Mother, until we acknowledge her roles as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate in a a formal definition, then and only then can she fully exercise her motherly roles on behalf of the church and the world, and we so desperately need it right now. Let me just give you a very quick analogy. It's like the analogy of Jesus to the apostles. Uh, who do they say that I am? Well, was Jesus having an identity crisis? Yeah, I don't think so. I think he knew who he was. He wanted to hear it from Peter. And he did hear it from Peter. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then we get the papacy in 2,000 years of benefit from that papacy. It's analogous to this, Mother. The dogma, the proclamation, allows Our Lady then to fully exercise her powers. Does she intercede now? Of course she does. But she can't fully intercede until we give our fiat, we give our consent, because God doesn't force grace. 
So that's the, the heart of the Amsterdam messages is that Our Lady says that she, re- she requests a, a dogma of her role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate. And finally, she says, only with this dogma will she be able to intercede for, in her words, peace, true peace for the world. So it's really the fulfillment of the Fatima message. And I think we can all agree that we need peace in a very desperate way, the, the real spiritual peace of Christ, perhaps like never before. Beloved, I don't think you're going to hear a summary like that from anybody in the world. I don't even know a bishop that will do that. But you know what you made me thought of, Mark? You made me thought of? You don't made worry. me think of? Don't worry about it. I'm from <laughs> Brooklyn. My grammar goes off. Um, I thought of a child uh, born, a mother giving birth to a child, and the child, for some reason, is orphaned in its early years. And then later, um, the child is given back to its mother. Uh, the mother finds the child. The child finds the mother, whatever it is. And the records show the mother's really the child's mother. But um, somehow the child doesn't know it. Maybe the child has been raised by foster parents or institutions. I worked for years for institutions for abandoned children. So the child, okay, but the child hardly knows what a mother is, the true mother. And, and is really skeptical because it's never known the love of a true mother, and it's not going to impose on that mother. It's going to still act like the mother's half a stranger. And so mm-hmm. uh, people say, it, the child will say, well, prove it. Prove it. How do we prove this is my real, real, real mother? And when we finally prove mm-hmm. that the mother is really the, the blood, the DNA, everything else, the true mother of the child, and the child can say, you're really mine, you're really my mother, I really belong to you. Now the mother is free to be a mother, to be received, to do everything for that child that God intended. Wouldn't that be it? Mother, that's a phenomenal example. That's exactly it. It's not that she wasn't mother the whole time. That's it. But the child didn't know it. But And, and what you point out in your example, which is uh, an inspiration, the mother can't fully express her motherhood without in, in, in infringing on the freedom of the child at that moment. If the, she just picks her up and grabs her. And the, the kid's going to be fighting back, right? Yeah, so that's right. you need, the, you need the, the, the consent of the child for the mother to fully express her motherhood. That's you, you, us right now. That's it. You need the reception it's, it's, it's of the child. Beautiful. People say, well, if she's co redemptrix who's stopping her? We are. We are if we don't that's embrace exactly right. her and receive her and believe her. It's yes. not. It's that's not a, the irony. Yeah, she didn't become co-redemptrix. She has been from the moment of the incarnation. That's absolutely true. And in fact, you know, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, made a comment that uh, she doesn't call herself co-redemptrix. Well, that's absolutely true. She doesn't. But it. But it. But it's God who calls her to that role from the moment she says yes i mean it, it's it's mother Teresa. uh no mary no jesus you know that's not rocket science mary says yes so you know mother Teresa says no mary no jesus saint irenaeus in the second century second century mariology says mary's the cause of salvation for herself and the whole human race by the 10th century they're calling her the redemptrix by the 14th century she's the co-redemptrix in the 17th century she's called co-redemptrix 300 times and then starting in the 19th century the pope start teaching this and then pius XI calls her co-redemptrix john paul ii calls her co-redemptrix seven times what's the point the point is this is our tradition there's nothing new here because it was given by god it was a role she was called to do and so that's why co-redemptrix never means that marries on an equal level with god that's blasphemy and heresy it doesn't mean it never meant that it doesn't mean, what do, what do we say in liturgy now, Mother? You know, yeah. we're co-heirs with Christ. The scriptures say equal that. Heirs? Yeah. Of course. Uh, St. Paul, uh, we're co-workers, we've got equal with Jesus? Of course not. But are we called to work with, we, we, we with. must, we must be co-redeemers. We, John Paul II called us to be co-redeemers three times. Pope Benedict took it up a notch. Pope Benedict went to Fatima, Mother, blessing the people with the Eucharist, in the monstrance, the sick, he says, I call you to become redeemers with the redeemer. Now that's powerful language, but that's what happens when we do Colossians 1.24, yeah. right? We off, we make up what is lacking in the stuffings of Christ. Who did that more than Our Lady? 
There we go. So it's not like we're putting Mary on a level of equality with Jesus. It's that we're acknowledging Mary's role in the redemption so we can do our role in the redemption, Paul calls us, which is critical. That's it. Paul calls us to be co-redeemers, to be reconcilers with Christ, to reconcile the world with Christ. That's being with co. That's being a co-redeemer. Right. I, I, I probably right. shouldn't ask you this on the air, but you said Pope Benedict <laughs> took it up 10 notches or something. And... Um, Pope Francis took it down a bit, so I think well, you know I, that. <laughs> we need, yeah, we right. need to, we need to, that. I'm going to get a plane ticket for you to meet with Pope Francis. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, Pope Francis also has made a, a 180 on his position on Medjugorje. Very At first good. he said, uh, you know, she's not a postman, and now he's made history because yeah. It's the first time in history that there's a there's official pilgrimages to an apparition site that hasn't been approved. So I think if anything yeah. we know about Pope Francis is that he's Latin. You can take Pope Francis out of Argentina, but you can't take Argentina out of Pope Francis. And so if you're looking for Teutonic clarity like Pope Benedict, you're looking in the wrong place. But his love of Our Lady is still yeah. there, and his references of co-redemptrix can use development, let's say, but uh, that like can mine. happen at any mm-hmm. time. Yeah, like mine. Yeah, uh, yeah right, right, right. Come Conversion, on. right. Uh, a greater understanding goes forward. So, no, you know, and it's interesting because Our Lady uh, of All Nations said two things. Pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. She gave a very beautiful prayer, uh, which is a prayer asking Jesus to send the Holy Spirit into the hearts of all nations to prevent three things, Mother. Degeneration, disasters, war. Are those not the headlines of today? Moral degeneration, natural disasters, wars and rumors of wars. Secondly, Our Lady asked us to petition the Holy Father for this dogma. She literally uses that expression, May 31st, 1954. So that's our part. We're talking about being co-workers. Let's do those things. Let's pray that prayer of the Lady of All Nations every day. It takes about 25 seconds prayerfully. And let's petition the Holy Father to help him understand that it's heaven's desire that he crown Our Lady with this fifth dogma. How wonderful, how wonderful. Oh, beloved, see how fast that music comes up again? I don't like it. We need a whole year for this. So we will continue with Dr. Maravalli as soon as we come back from this break. And today, because of this very special program, uh, we will take your calls, texts, and emails, but only for Dr. Maravalli, only on Our Lady. It doesn't have to be the Lady of All Nations or even the subject of co-redemptrix, but anything about our kid. We, can we pray to Mary? You know, do we pray to statues? You know, like anything that's on your heart, you don't even have to be Catholic to call in. And you don't even have to be Jewish. You could be anything you want. But call in with anything on your heart, any question, and uh, we'll be right back. The future of the family is grim. As Our Lady of Fatima said, the final battle will be for the family. It truly seems as though we're in the heat of this final battle and we need your help. Our mission at LifeSite News is to educate and activate readers with the information they need to defend life and the family and restore Christian culture. We are currently the most popular pro-life website on the internet with over 40 million unique users every year. And we've been experiencing an even bigger reach than ever this year. But we need your help to reach more of the 7.7 billion people on earth if we are to truly succeed in changing the culture. Please consider donating to help our mission of promoting the culture of life and fearless defenders of the faith like Mother Miriam. Visit give.lifesite.news.com to give today. Thank you for your support. My name is Jesse Romero. I'm a retired Los Angeles cop. I'm a Catholic lay evangelist. You probably hear me Monday through Friday at the Terry and Jesse show. My new show on spiritual warfare is called Jesus 911. Every Saturday at noon. That's a Soul Patrol Catholic program where three cops on fire with our Catholic faith. You can hear this program around the world on the iCatholic Radio app. Jesus 911. Saturdays at noon here on the station of the Cross Radio Catholic Network. God bless you. Keep the faith. 
We offer several ways to view our programming grid, including at our website, thestationofthecross.com, and on our iCatholic Radio app. Just click the menu icon in the top left portion of our app and select the link to our programming grid. That's at thestationofthecross.com and on our free iCatholic Radio app for Android and Apple mobile devices. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. We have a whole half hour to ourselves right now, and our phone lines are wide open, and we are privileged to have Dr. Mark Miravalli with us today. Um, Dr. Miller, it's Dr. Mark Miravalli, M-I-R-A-V-A-L-L-E, and many of you are going to say, Mother, what are you spelling his name for? We know who he is. We've been to his conferences. We've read his books. In fact, what I didn't tell you is that... Um, uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, Mark, but uh, your books, three of them I read, helped me into the church, all on Mary, because I just, it, oh, she was the last thing. I just put her on the shelf. Who could ever believe that? And I figured, well, if I come to believe the church is true, then what's written about her must be true. So I, you know, so I started praying to her, and um, one priest said, she's praying to Mary, she's finished, she'll be in the church. And, and I was in the church <laughs> six weeks later. Didn't it's oh, amazing God. for that? Amazing. So yeah. um, Jewish mothers, mother of Jewish mothers. I they don't. They don't. Uh, they don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't take their time on that stuff. They got. They move. Talk about carpe right. diem women. They <laughs> seize the moment. They seize the moment. They do. So, beloved, this is the moment you can seize. Oh, that was not a great introduction, Mark. I, I love your words. <laughs> so, Sweet segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, our toll-free number, beloved, is one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three. I'll say it again: one eight seven seven five one one five four eight three. You can email at mother at the station of the cross dot com and you can text at the toll free number as well. But at the today, because we have such a privileged um time um with Dr. Miravalli, we're gonna take calls only on our lady. If you missed what the program's about, don't worry about it. If you have any trouble with our lady, if you are uh, Protestant, if you're a Protestant, like I was, an evangelical <laughs> Protestant for 18 years trying to save Catholics. Um, blessed be God, all you Catholics won. But um, uh, that's what I did for 18 years from my Jewish background. So from my Jewish background, I came to believe in the Jewish Messiah. That was an oivé to a lot of Jewish people. And then into the Catholic Church, I believed, I came to believe in the Jewish Messiah's Jewish mother. And oh, is she a mother? She's so terrific. She will always answer the prayers of her children. Always, always. And there is no surer, quicker, faster, better way to know our Lord than to go through his mother. A mother knows her son more than anyone will ever, will be a million years. There's no years, there's no time in heaven, but we'll be all eternity in heaven. We still won't know about Jesus, what Mary knows, because we didn't diaper him. She knows everything, I tell you. So if you have everything, anything on your mind, call in for Dr. Miravalli on Mary. It doesn't matter the subject as long as it has to do with the Blessed Mother. Um, and this, and what we're focusing on today is um, her title, approved title, as Our Lady of All Nations. And um, her, uh, how do I want to say, I want to say approved, I'm going to say it I'm going to say this, Mark. I might get arrested. Her proved title as co-redemptrix. <laughs> it has not been named a for, formal Marian doctrine, such as she's the mother of God, the Immaculate Conception. But she's been called co-redemptrix throughout all of history by popes and saints and everybody else. She's been called what she is. And so we just need to know who she is. And as I said at that conference, we were together by your invitation, Mark. Um, I, we, children don't know about their mother as children. They don't know. You got to be kidding, mother. You were once president of that company before you got married and had us kids. You 
You're that smart? You're that capable? You could do all... You mean you invented the paperclip? You know, whatever it was. I can't believe <laughs> that's right. the... I can't believe that's the mother I have. Why didn't you tell us? Because mothers don't do that. They just they just nurture. They just take <laughs> care. They're they're concerned with that's our it. health and the future. Not that they they, they don't focus on themselves. They don't. Not not a good mother. So uh, that's us as as our children. We come to know. We may have to be three hundred years old before we wake up, but we come to know as we grow. <laughs> Who, what kind of a mother we have, that she is co-redemptrix. There's never a time I will say the name of Jesus without thanking Mary for bearing him and bringing him to us. Yeah. She's co-redemptrix. Not, we don't have to name her that. She is that. But we need to yeah. formally declare that in order for us kids to fully receive all that she waits and longs to give us. Right. Uh, uh, mother, no, it's very, it's very, very true. And, you know, it's what Cardinal Newman, now St. Newman, called, you know, the development of doctrine. And that means yeah. these, are, these are seeds of truth, and we get to know them better over the years. Now, when we have popes and saints and mystics and victim souls, all of whom come together on the truth of Mary's unique role with and under Jesus in the great work of the redemption. Yeah. So, for example... I mean, if we went through all of history, Mother, uh, who would dare raise their hand and say, you know, I think I helped Jesus save souls a little bit more than Mary. Well, no one's saying, <laughs> right? No Excuse one rational laughing, would right. say that. Yeah. No, and and that's, that's all that this title is saying, is that Mary had a unique role with and under Jesus in the great work of the redemption. When, Pi when Pope Pius XI explained and defended the title in a papal talk, he said this is because of two reasons. Number one, exactly what you said. He, she gave Jesus the, the, uh, the instrument of redemption, which is his body. She, she gave him birth. She gave birth to the Redeemer. How did the Redeemer enter the world? Through Mary. And not through just a physical channel, by the way. God doesn't use women as just physical channels. You know, Mary's not a surrogate mother. She's a true mother, and she gave her moral and she's not a single yes. mother, if I could clarify that. Amen to that as well. She's not. Wow. She's in part one of marriage. Exactly. She's not an unwed mother. Part one of marriage is the betrothal in, as you know, Jewish custom. That's why if you break part one of marriage, even in today with Orthodox Judaism, you have to get a divorce. So it is equal not to a divorce. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. She's in marriage part one. And then Pius the Eleven said, but also in light of her co-suffering with Jesus unto yes. the cross. Yes. So while it's completely true to say Mary's role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix of all grace and advocate, is a doctrine of the church taught by the papal magisterium over and over, it has not yet been raised to a dogma. And a dogma is what Pius IX, who declared the dogma of the Immaculate Conception, a dogma is the perfection of the doctrine. It's, it's like... It's like a, the Pope has got a special marker, and he only uses it sometimes in history. When he wants to emphasize for the faithful something the Holy Spirit says, let them know this with a greater force, with a greater emphasis. And so be confident. he underlines. Exactly, exactly. He underscores, he highlights this truth, which is already a doctrine. So Mary's co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate is already a doctrine because the Popes have yep. taught that. It's time to proclaim it as a dogma so she can bring us the peace that she promised yes. in Fatima, and we need it by the minute. Indeed, indeed. And dearest Mark, we have a call from Rosa in um, California. Are you there, dear Rosa? I am. Thank you, Hello, Mother. Hello, dear one. I know I... you've called in before. I'm happy to hear from you again. Tell me your question I... for Dr. Maravalli. Okay. Um, it's, uh, it's a little general, and, it, and you remember I have a hard time forming questions, and I always want a personal uh, question from you, and I'm always into these uh, uh, more general aspects that are so fascinating that you bring on, and thank you very much for thank I'm just going to call Dr. Mark. I'm I sorry. happen to think you have no problem at all. You're very articulate. Yeah. Your only problem is getting to the question. Go ahead. Exactly, getting to the point, yes. <laughs> well, you can tell my background psychiatry, right? So, yes, anyway, yes. Um, so 
what I wanted to ask um, a doctor to to kind of go to, unless it's not going to be good for the show, because to, to more of a personal level. If it's about our um, mother, it'll be good for the show. It is. Be, okay, yeah, go ahead. So, Rosa. All right. Rosa. Yes. Ask the question. Perfect. So, <laughs> for the more... For the, I know, it's so funny. I love you. Anyway, for the more intimate, personal, internal way, because I've had this experience. I walked away from it, but I had it. Where Mary reaches out in a way that is not where you have to study it or have proofs or, you know, I love the apparitions and I love learning about them, but at the same time, there's a way, especially with the women and the girls that have been brought up to to harm our femininity, to harm our maternal instincts, mm-hmm. which I did, to to do everything against the womanhood that Mary um, ha- brought to us. I mean, to me, that's mm-hmm. a huge biblical story. And so mm-hmm. it was me now... In looking back um, and being away from the church for 30 years, being brought in only accidentally, but not really, only by Mary. I couldn't even say, I could not even say a name. Um, I was brought up Catholic, but uh, uh, where I could say, you know, I believe in Jesus Christ, because I didn't at the time. But somehow Mary just kept pulling me in. So, um, Mm. so, and then I walked away again. However, I'm back. But I'm seeing now, Mm. as I look back over my life, and I'm sure a lot of people do, and it fits right in with the feminist thought, too. We have walked away so long. We had the perfect picture, not just picture, the perfect mm-hmm. mother teaching us our manners, teaching us our femininity. Teaching Mark, us trust me, really Rose is getting, things. Mark, trust me, Rose is getting to her question. She'll be there. Don't just hang okay, on. Okay, I, I, I believe that. I have faith <laughs> I in Rosa. Yeah, so Go that ahead, question, sweetheart. really, what it is is more of a, of a, an, an invitation for you to speak on that aspect of the silent way that she's constantly Mm. trying to bring us back in, clean us up, kiss us, tell us, and then we go out and do it again. And and we can, and she keeps reaching back for us. Rosa, I love you. And uh, dear Mark, there's a book called, I I didn't read it, the silence of Mary, but my own Uh sister, my own blood sister was not Catholic. And she read that book It brought her to Mary, and she came into the church. The silence of Mary. Amazing. Yeah, it's very beautiful. And and let me me recommend another book, but again, I I want to speak to your kind of existential question about how does Our Lady return to true femininity. Uh, There's there's an outstanding book by Dr. Carrie Gress. It's it's identifying the anti-Mary syndrome of this age because... It's really a rejection of femininity and maternity in its most beautiful form in what she identifies as an anti-Mary syndrome in our present day. But you'll, you'll appreciate the head side of that, which, which is also testimonial in large degree about how, in fact, radical feminism is anything but feminine. Uh, that's, that's the tragedy. Uh, and it's Our Lady that returns to an authentic femininity. But to be very experiential with this, Rosa, I, I, I agree. I thank you for asking that. And I, I thank you for your, your humility in testifying that you lost it and now you, you want to return. But I would say this. There will be no faster, more effective way than for any woman to regain her femininity than to pray the rosary before our Lord exposed in the Blessed Sacrament. Now, let me tell you why. Because you're, you're meditating on the life of Jesus and Mary, and that's how the rosary is both a prayer of the head and a prayer of the heart, while you're getting sunburned. So excuse me for a Florida analogy. Oh, I but anytime love that. <laughs> you, you are in front of our Eucharistic Lord, you are getting sunburned. He is sanctifying you. Sometimes we say, you know, well, I'm not concentrating. I'm not focused. He doesn't need that. I mean, that's always nice. He doesn't need that. The same thing. Bring your kids to get sunburned. I can't focus. If you're in his presence, he will restore your femininity in ways a thousand books couldn't do. And if you're praying the rosary, 
Our Lady will be doing the same thing. So the rosary before adoration to return to authentic femininity. And uh, dear Mark, because there's the music for our break, what is the title of that book? It's called The Anti-Mary Syndrome by Carrie Gress. It's, it's What's that first word? She, the first word? Uh, anti. So anti, just like uh, like the Antichrist. She's saying it's the oh, anti-Mary anti. Syndrome. Okay, excuse me. Yeah, anti. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awful. It's, a, it's an outstanding work because she goes through the feminism syndrome. and. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Rosa, is that good, or is, do you wish to continue this? Does that help? Yeah. A brief continue, yes, on the other side. All right, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Love learning more about the church, but confused or disheartened by the struggles we are facing today? Follow LifeSite News Catholic on Facebook, Twitter, or sign up for LifeSite Catholic emails and stay up to date on the constant stream of news about the Catholic Church. Our church is at a time of crisis, and we as laity have a responsibility and a duty to educate ourselves and stay true to the faith. LifeSite News Catholic is dedicated to keeping the laity informed and educated. To follow us, go to Facebook or Twitter and search LifeSite News Catholic. As Mother Miriam always says, we must live as if it were true. This is Rick Paolini and Father Jacek Mazur. Join us every Sunday morning. We'll be delving into the diary of St. Maria Faustina and discussing the topics important in your life. Whether you're wrestling with willpower or praying for patience, God uses the diary to speak to your struggles. So tune in for Divine Mercy in My Soul every Sunday morning at 11. And catch the Encore presentation every Tuesday evening at 8. Jesu Ufam Tobie. Jesus, I trust in you. The Station of the Cross thanks our financial supporters who have enabled us to broadcast Catholic programs for more than 20 years. As a nonprofit lay organization not affiliated with your diocese, our apostolate is listener supported. Through your generosity, we're able to inspire countless listeners with the gospel message and help lead them to a parish to be spiritually nourished by the sacraments. Thank you for your continued support and may God bless you and your family. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome, welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. We are here with Dr. Mark Miravalli, STD, which stands for Sacred Theology Doctorate, which he got at the University, uh, Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome. And Dr. Mark holds the St. John Paul II Chair of Mariology at Franciscan University of Steubenville, where he's been teaching since 1986. And you can go to markmiravalli.com for lots of more information um and i am i'm just a happy 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 uh a happy catholic woman a happy sister to uh sister of mark to be uh with him on this program today such a delight such a treat just uh, you just do my heart good i don't need to compliment you you just <laughs> do my heart good we've been on the phone with rosa Please and go. i've asked today beloved this is our last segment uh, so we have about 10 minutes, and we've been on the phone with Rosa, and I ask any questions or emails you have. Uh, we'll only respond today to those that are about our Blessed Mother. Um, and uh, dear Rosa um, uh, was on before the break, and um, Mark uh, just gave a, a, a beautiful response and a wonderful book that we could all get. Um, but I, I'm wondering if your question uh, you're saying the average person who won't go before the Blessed Sacrament and pray the Rosary, which we do here every day, um, who won't read books, who won't search, how does Mary come to them? Is that basically what you're asking? Am I on, Mother? I was disconnected. I'm not sure. Uh, did you hear me just now? 
Um, yes, I I only heard part of it. I called back. Um, okay, know, I'm so um, sorry for that, Rosa. Go ahead. That's all right. We, we just um, have a few just... minutes, and we have others yes. waiting on the line. So just sure. kind of sum things up, I and if, if Mark left anything <laughs> out, let him know. I will. Okay, so actually, um, he, he addressed it beautifully, and um, I wanted to uh, be not to ask the question again, but to confirm, to say to him, thank you. And also, I want to confirm exactly what he said before the break, that the way that you are going to restore womanhood is in saying the rosary in front of the Blessed Sacrament because it's happening. However, the way it's happening is very painful because it's in many ways, it's too late for me. My age, my life, my you know debauchery, everything. So it almost that's a prime time, and you might want to say something to this too. It's a prime time for that mockery of the evil one. Like, what the heck are you even doing? Because it's way too late for you. You'll never be that. You know, never be a, a a woman like you needed to be, and you could have been, but you aren't. You know. But I've I've yeah. been experiencing yeah. that. I, yes, every time I I do so, that. So I, my, if you don't rebuke this, Rosa, I yeah. will. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, yeah. Rosa, uh, that, that's simply a lie from Good. hell. There it doesn't go. deserve anything more than that. It's a lie from hell. And, you know, we all get them regarding our thorns in the flesh. So it may not be the same for everyone, but Satan always goes after our weak point. Just reject it and rebuke it and realize, Rosa, your spiritual motherhood has just begun. There are ladies and, 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 and men and children out there that you are called to be a mother, not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense, as St. Edith Stein said so beautifully, to give a particular love, a particular affirmation, to notice what no one else noticed, just like Mary at Cana. No one else knew they were running out of wine. That's ahead of you, Rosa. Your motherhood is about to explode because you are doing the rosary before the Blessed Sacrament. So I can guarantee you, whatever the, the beauties of your femininity and motherhood were before, it ain't nothing compared to what's coming because you're going to be doing it in the mother's heart along with the graces that come from our Eucharistic Lord. So I'm excited for you because of what's, what's ahead for you in your femininity and your motherhood, like never before. I'm thrilled. Very- and Rosa, go ahead, Rosa. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Um, yes. And I, I'm going to make this super fast. Just part of this is I had an estra- I have an estranged sister, multiple sclerosis, dementia, locked away in Oregon, no family, horrible life as well. We all were brought up in the 60s and just insane. And uh, her daughter committed suicide, et cetera. She was very bitter against the church, bitter, bitter, bitter. And right before the pandemic, I had an urge to call her. She hated me. Um, and I mean, God just turned that on its ear. And then as I'm talking to her on the phone, I'm, I'm 2000 miles away. I'm thinking, okay, we're just talking about bitterness. What can I do? And I go, I said, Hey, do you, re- do you remember the prayers to the rosary? And she goes, yes. And I said, well, if I sent you one, would you want to say it? And she goes, sure. And so every single night, except when I can't get to her, um, cause she got, she, I'm really worried about her. She's in now in a, a skilled care and I, I'm really afraid, but also every night, and we've still done it since she's been there, we would say the rosary. And then she remembered O Salutaris and she remembered Tantum Ergo more than <laughs> I do. And so we say it every single night now and she's really happy. And she goes, you know, this really grounds me. So, I mean, really praise God. I think I'm praise, And that's another testimony to how Mary works behind the scenes. And, and it's also, other it, no, no, don't go away yet, Rosa. It's also a testimony to the life, your years during the time you were away. I was a jail chaplain, women's jail chaplain, 10 years. And they brought me a woman uh, who was uh, in the process of committing suicide and brought her to me, locked her up in my office with me. And I, I was in heaven and told me everything. And at that mm-hmm. moment, that woman's life, because of God, was utterly turned around and and it was because i i didn't go through her life but i knew where she was at and the only reason i knew where she was at is because of the life that i had experienced many years ago and at that moment i she walked out of the office with such hope and i got on my knees before god and i thanked him for the worst time in my entire life 
because if it was for that one soul, it was worth it. And every time you've gone away from God or rejected Mary, rejected the church, even though you came in and then left and came back, that's for a million souls because you will understand where they're at. And uh, St. Augustine said, late have I come to love thee. God will waste absolutely nothing and if you have only five years left which hopefully you have like me i already know i'm living to 500 because i asked god to do that (laughs) so however many years you have left um god will use them not only because mary uh has and is making you the most beautiful spiritual mother in the world but because of all you went through when you were not uh, on board with her so um you god we think we've wasted years god wastes nothing and he will multiply that just as he did for saint augustine who became a um a doctor of the church after years and years of debauchery one more thing rosa um i have celiac which means i can't have gluten and the only other uh thing that gl- a, a gluten-free diet really can cure is ms so if you can get to that uh, facility your sister's living in and somehow uh, get them to give her a gluten-free diet. She, she's at such a stage now, it may not totally cure her, but it's going to help enormously. Okay, Rosa, mm. God bless you. Thank you God, so much. God bless you, you too. You guys are okay. awesome. Okay, you're pretty awesome yourself. Okay, hold on. We have <laughs> Jacqueline on the line. Are you there, Jacqueline, from Boston? I am. Can you hear me, Mother Maria? Uh, I can hear you, sweetheart, but we have one minute left for the program. I'm so sorry. I don't know what just happened with the mic. Oh, there you are. Go ahead. Ask your question for Dr. Mark. We have very little time. So go ahead. Maybe you can. Mother, so Mary has all of the names, obviously, Our Lady of Nations, Our Lady of Sorrows, Our Lady of Fatima. 30 seconds. And there's all these prayers. So... I'm doing the true devotion to Mary, the St. Louis de Montfort. Good. Um, so how do you explain all of those, how she has all these different names to people who are like, well, isn't it just Mary? Why does she have all of these other titles? Because the titles express all of her functions for us. That's how she appears different ways in different places. But it's all an expression of her universal motherhood for, for all of us. So I think that's probably all the time I've got. But uh, yeah. it, it, that's, a, that's expressing her universality. It's perfect. Dr. Mark Miravalli, I can't thank God enough for you. Thank you. And we'll see you all on Monday. Thank Have a God. good weekend. Mm-hmm.